a new, exciting open source blockchain platform has been born. Its core mission is to develop easier and more affordable tools for everyone to be able to create tokens and NFTs. For the first time, we're introducing the innovative Tokel platform, a fully decentralized community-driven project with contributors globally. It offers many new powerful features for artists, content creators, and event organizers, and token owners. Tokel is building the future of tokenization together with the help of Komodo Technologies. Creators and users have the freedom to create, to hold, buy, sell, and trade tokens with ease. Developers have the freedom to build on top of the platform's layer. Tokel has features such as simplified token creation tools, token decks, and NFT marketplace. The NFT creation process has an extremely low barrier to entry. Businesses and individuals can now benefit from the token economy by using tokens in everyday life. A built-in decentralized exchange enables peer-to-peer -peer trading. Tokel.io, the future of tokenization to NFT and beyond. Greetings, I'm Giuliano. Welcome to Tokel Talk. And in today's episode, we have Somi Aryan, a tech philosopher, filmmaker, author, and keynote speaker here to discuss Fempeaker's NFT collection and how Fempeak is building a new kind of university for the age of the metaverse. We also have Nadav Zemmer, an educator and school principal who is passionate about new learning paradigms emerging as Web3 and NFTs are set to disrupt education. Plus, we have two experts in the marketing field. Arvin Kamsey from Sold Out NFTs, and Tim Halderson from Lunar Strategy. These masterminds can tell us how to sell out NFTs, increase floor price, and gain advantages over the competition. Plus, we can learn how to spot potentially successful NFT projects. All right, so welcome, Somi. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. And th thank you as well to Nadav. Welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. And of course, Arvin, thank you for, for coming as well. Thank you for having me. And Tim from Lunar Strategy, thank you for being here. Yeah, happy to be here and help in any way I can. Wonderful. We also have Dream Tim as well. And we have Kelsey and we have Natalia Lika. Hey, hey, welcome. All right. We'll also be doing an NFT giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Watch out for the form that will get posted in the Tokal Events chat during the stream. If you want to contact the show, go to our website tokel.io slash tokel talk. Before we get into our further discussion, here's Kelsey with some NFT news and stats. Hi, Kelsey. This week in NFT statistics, the total global market cap for NFTs is at over $10.7 billion, with over 97,000 NFTs sold and a sales volume of over $310 million. This week's top selling NFT collections were Azuki, other Deed for Other Side, PXN Ghost Division, Board Ape Yacht Club, and Mutant Ape Yacht Club. The top selling individual NFTs were one Rev Racing NFT, which sold for $618,000, a Rev Racing NFT that sold for $590,000, a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT, which sold for $578,000, a Crypto Mondo Platform Access NFT, which sold for $536,000, and an Obo Abo Abstract Art NFT, which sold for $466,000. This week in NFT news, NFTs are entering the tourism industry. The tourism organization in Portoros, a summer resort on the Adriatic coast of Slovenia, has decided to promote the destination using NFTs as a way to attract visitors to the region. Tourists in Portoros will be able to collect NFTs from visiting local destinations and can even win prizes. Tourists will be able to collect three tokens from three different collections when they perform three activities such as participating in a game, subscribing to a newsletter, and sharing a sticker on Instagram. The world-famous pop legend Madonna is entering the world of NFTs. She recently released an NFT that shows an animation of her giving birth to a tree. She created the video in partnership with Super Rare, and this NFT is the first in a three-part collection. 
Instagram is testing digital collectibles with a handful of US creators and collectors who will be able to share NFTs on Instagram that they have created or bought. The proposed features include connecting your Instagram account to a digital wallet and sharing digital collectibles on the platform with the ability to tag both the creator and the collector. The blockchains that will be supported are Ethereum and Polygon, with Flow and Solana soon to follow. By building support for NFTs, Instagram is hoping to improve the accessibility, lower barriers to entry, and help make the NFT space more inclusive to all communities. In sports news, MLB is announcing a partnership with SoRare, an NFT gaming company, to launch an NFT-based fantasy-style baseball game this summer. So Rare will become the official NFT baseball game partner of MLB and will provide fans with a platform to play fantasy games while purchasing, selling, and collecting NFTs of MLB players. This week, somebody accidentally sold a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT for 200 USDC. Bored Ape Yacht Club is one of the most expensive NFT collections on the market and has a floor price of over $200,000. An ape number 6,462 has some of the rarest attributes. Many believe it was a tax evasion scheme considering the circumstances surrounding the transaction. The NFT has been sold a couple of times for no less than $7,000 each time. Records show that the NFT has been transferred at least five times between different wallets since it was minted. Additionally, the buyer's account on OpenSea was created this month and the offer was accepted within a few minutes after being received. In Togo platform news, over half of the 777 Cyber Komodo eggs have been hatched since the Cyber Komodo's hatching portal opened on Friday. This includes a rarity number 3 and 4, which are the first to be hatched in the top 10. Now, it's time for us to turn over to our discussion. We're going to meet our guests in more detail. So first, we're going to start with Somi. Welcome again to this show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. And you are leading Fempeakers NFT, which celebrates people in science, technology, macroeconomy, and philosophy. Yes. That's right. Yes. So um, essentially, what we are trying to get um, at is that Formal education is no longer fit for purpose in a in the age of exponential growth, you know, technological uh, growth, and um, we uh, we need a new way of teaching emerging technologies. Um, so the platform that we are building is uh, focused around doing this type of live education to teach people about emerging technologies as they unfold. Um, everything is live and then they get recorded, they go on to our on-demand section, and uh, over time we keep refining it uh, to make sure that it's kind of like almost like a live um, platform. You know, in, in, in what I mean by that, it means that, uh, what I mean by that is that like the actual platform, it's almost like it's alive, right? Like in the sense mm-hmm. that it's um, it, like a breathing organism, right? That, that it's constantly, uh, having to adapt to the environment around it. And, and I want that um, kind of sense to come across. Um, the platform was uh, originally focused on bringing in more women into the space, but actually we are expanding now. So the fr- first, um, the, the platform itself, itself is being rebranded. We are f- working on the new brand name now, so I can't yet announce it, but it will be uh, essentially like, uh, because the the first one being fem peakers, a lot of people would have thought that it was just for women. So we are rebranding that, and then fem peak will become uh, a part of the bigger brand, so that the bigger brand is for everybody, men, you know, uh, people of all sorts of other backgrounds, um, genders and and uh, sexualities, etc. They can all come in. It doesn't really matter what your gender is. Um, and uh, it really is focused on this whole concept of, um, you know, moving towards the singularity 
emerging technologies and how do we learn and educate ourselves. Uh, you know, Web3 is only one of them. For example, we are already uh, talking about the fact that Web3 in, in a few years time, maybe in five years time, uh, Web3 could potentially be um, disrupted once again. And the next wave of disruption is potentially coming from uh, quantum computing. So I'm already doing a lot of research on that and I'm like preparing what, for what will happen. You know, where where is the next generation? What's the next thing? What's Web4 is going to look like, you know? So so like always ahead, uh, staying ahead of the curve and preparing people for that. And then the, um, uh, the NFT drop will give people lifetime... Uh, that you are inspired by Frederick Nietzsche and also mm -hmm. by Elon Musk. You mm -hmm. want to speak about that? Yeah, definitely. So um, uh, I, I'm a philosopher. You know, I call myself a tech philosopher because I focus on the philosophy of technology. Uh, I've done um, years of research, mostly on uh, initially on AI and then um, uh, on blockchain technology. And uh, my philosophy has been uh, highly influenced by a philosopher Nietzsche um, he, and his idea of the Ubermunch. And essentially the Ubermunch is what I see as this next generation of um, humanity, you know, like the, uh, as we evolve into something else, not no longer necessarily just homo sapiens, you know, but um, as we merge with technology, like we are already merging with technology, you know, our uh, devices, our, our mobile phones, our computers, they are, 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 uh, they are an extension of ourselves. And this is, falls very much in line with a lot of the thinking that Elon Musk has around the concept, this this whole, whole idea of the neural link, you know, the devices that he's building to connect the human brain to, um, you know, uh, uh, computers um, and uh, that's fascinating and then uh, also his uh, thoughts around um, you know going beyond earth and and taking humanity to the next um, uh, you know to to beyond just just our our earth um, to me I think that Elon Musk as a person is a really good um, example of uh, like this Ubermunch, you know, I could think of him as like being like the father of like that kind of Ubermunch, right? And maybe the children he's um, he's got right now, you know, like the way that he's naming his children, you know, the way as he's thinking about the future of humanity. Um, I'm also a big fan of Grimes. Um, you know, I really love her thinking. You know, she she actually also talks about you know being uh, human humans no longer being Homo sapiens and being Homo techno essentially. You know, so I really like that them as a family, and I see that they are. Uh, I see them as being an example of like, if you will, uh, you know, the the super postmodern kind of like uh, fa family and like maybe early versions of of what the future of humanity would look like. Very interesting. It's a, it's a interesting to hear your 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 thoughts about the future of humanity. I think a lot of us are here because we are interested in the future and we're seeing it come to pass through these technologies. So you've you've recently released um you've recently released the Fem Peakers NFT and I know you mentioned you're going to be changing some names, but basically this NFT acts as a as a pass as well as it's artwork. Actually, sorry, it's actually not uh, of the of the drop uh, will be the official drop will be in July. Um, so it hasn't actually the drop hasn't happened at the moment. Okay. It's only available to we are airdropping it to our premium members uh, for like a, a few hundred of it um, will be going to our premium members. But there's an official drop coming in mid July. For, uh, right. for the OK, I'm glad you clarified that. Say that again. Uh, so there will be around just over 9,000 that will be part of that drop that comes in in July. Over 9,000. And that'll be in July. And you mentioned that you also have premium members that also receive these energy. Yeah, the premium members. So what we did, we've done something a little bit different to what most... Uh, other nft projects done so we initially minted all of them to my wallet so that i could airdrop it uh, to people as we created contests and you know like build awareness and um and then we're gonna have and then we are creating another uh, smart contract that gives access to that wallet and then people will be able to mint it from that wallet so there will be an official drop um around mid-july and depending on how many premium members we have by then. Uh, so right now, I think we've already airdropped just over 300. So we may be uh, having like about five or 600 of them given away by then. Um, and then, you know, there will be around 
9,000 or just over 9,000 uh, that will be a part of that drop. And we will be keeping a very small amount uh, also to give away to our speakers and you know educators and, and people who uh, come onto our platform, our future kind of speakers. Very nice. Well, thank you, Somi. And you know, I, I want to keep in mind the idea of, of building a new kind of university for the age of the yes. metaverse. And we have our, our next guest as well is Nadav Zemmer. And he's also involved with education. And, you know, Nadav, um, I'm curious to hear from you uh, about the future of education in Web3 and metaverse space. So what does blockchain, um, the key technology behind Web3, have to do with education? Yeah, thank you. It's a great question. So if... Uh... That, that technology, that blockchain technology, it's just a ledger. That's all we're talking about, right? It's a very simple uh, underlying concept of a ledger. The ledger that's decentralized and not controlled by governments and corporations is significant. But um, if you think of Bitcoin as an economic ledger of accounts, a high school transcript is also just a ledger of academic capital, if you will. Um, and so at HS Credit, I'm here representing HS Credit. I'm the spokesperson for the uh, DAO. And um, we are creating a high school transcript that is uh, each credit is minted as an NFT. Um, and so we offer high stakes uh, educational accountability data. I'm a longtime administrator in the New York City Public Schools. Um, and so we're offering a accountability data that's not based on standardized tests, right? That um, industrial model that was a push model where, you know, central authorities push products through advertising onto the consumer who is expected to do as little effort as possible versus the digital platform, which is a pull model where you pull, you know, people's use of their cars or their homes. Um, and the end user is expected to add value with their effort. Um, and so that inversion, as they call it in business, um, we're bringing to education by replacing, offering an alternative to a um, high stakes standardized testing model with a high stakes project based learning model or an education, we call it performance based assessment. Um, and so anybody at any school, you don't have to have gone to the right middle school to go to the right high school. Anybody at any school can have this gold, you know, it's not a fiat transcript issued by the state, it's a gold standard transcript. And it's verified by our credit experts who are paid $150 an hour on the platform re-evaluate each incoming piece before it's minted as an NFT. So we offer reliability and scalability and access for students to a gold standard transcript um, that lets them have an advantage in their post-secondary applications, if that's university or a job. Um, having credits on the hs.credit platform shows that you can uh, deal with ambiguity and deliver a product and um, produce media right because audio video is the new paper and pen it's literacy still but it's digital literacy so it shows that you are ready for a um, web3 world um, in in comparison to other people applying to that university or job i see so it would be it would be particularly web3 specific education no 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 it's high school credits um, it's just a Web3 pull model where the student's effort pulls the credits into existence. We have an inverted credit model that I can talk about, but the student effort pulls a credit into existence rather than being pushed down from the teacher. Um, yeah. talk and they mint an NFT to curious. represent that experience with a piece of audio or video. So you can go to the transcript and scan a QR code and uh, see the work, the proof of work behind each credit um, mm -hmm. for yourself to see what it is that earned that credit. But our credit experts are the ones that um, offer that reliable high stakes assessment um, through inner rate of reliability on the platform. And you mentioned that, you mentioned this, uh, the inversion of the credits. Could you just yeah, describe so, that a bit more, you said? Yeah, great. So right now the way it works, um, all of us know, is that you take a course and then there's a high stakes exam at the end, a final exam, or it might be a standardized test. But even if it's a course, it's just that final exam or the midterm, right? Those are the high stakes assessments of your learning. And they're incentivized in uh, state government to water those down every year, just like printing more credits, just like printing more dollars because they want graduation rates to tick up. But even if just in one course, if we're not talking about an actual um, you know, state exam, the, it's easier to evaluate content on a, standard, on a test and grade it than it is to evaluate the more um, you know, students engaging with questions that don't have simple yes, no, correct, incorrect answers. Um, and so the inverted credit model, the way it works is students, instead of 
um, the high stakes evaluation at the end. The high stakes evaluation is the beginning of learning. So students have to what we call stake content. They have to invest their attention and study a topic and they then come onto our platform to create a credit and they have, a, they have to show us what they read and what studying they did on a topic. And that's how the learning begins, right? So once they've shown and taken notes on a topic and shown their interest, um, then they get a task or they choose a task with their teacher, they can create their own task. Um, and then they choose how we want to evaluate them. So we have a bunch of different evaluation um, indicators and they say which ones they want to be evaluated on. That's going to be on their transcript. So if you choose um, a Harvard style evaluation or, you know, a New York State evaluation, that's going to be that's going to show how you were evaluated. And then our credit experts use that evaluation method with the final upload to mint the NFT. So there are two phases to this inverted credit. The first is staking, where we screen out kids at the front end instead of waiting till they get to the end and tell them they failed. We make sure that they're ready to do the hard work of producing media at the front end. And then at the end, they stake the credit, they mint the credit once the three credit experts review it and approve it. And so this is interesting. You think it's going to um, you think it's going to pull their their motivation into their work? Well, I think it's going to take students who are currently bored and give them an opportunity to do independent study to show an advantage when they're applying to college. Um, there are a lot of kids that are bored in our schools and are not being challenged because they're getting worksheets and they're not, you know, they're not invested. They go home to answer questions the teacher asked rather than answering questions that they're asking and using their academic skills to, you know, to, to pry into those more complicated, more complex, actually, um, topics. So it's an opportunity for young people to demonstrate their abilities above and beyond what their peers might be doing initially. And then we have a crypto incentive system to then start spreading it to people who might not normally. Um, but that's um, the, the credits themselves have the most value just as a gold standard high school transcript. Because right now you have to go to a great school to have a gold standard transcript. Otherwise, you know, the, the transcripts aren't worth, I know in, in the U.S., the transcripts aren't worth very much because if the school isn't recognized, there are many schools you can graduate without learning how to read or write, right? So having a gold standard transcript that everybody trusts because of our credit experts um, and anybody has access to levels of playing field and lets a student at any school, maybe something happened to them in middle school, somebody died in their family, they had some crisis. But if it's 16, we're just dealing with kids in the last two years of the K through 12 journey. So if they're 16 and they decide to get serious and turn around, they have an opportunity to mint one of these gold standard academic NFTs to show their abilities and to compete on a level playing field with other students at other schools. Interesting. It reminds me a bit of school choice. I know it's not the exact same thing, but um, I don't know. I don't want to get down that road. I'm actually curious to stay on the Web3 road and just the idea of how Web3 education would allow the students to take ownership of their learning, but it sounds like you're describing that pretty well, aren't you? Right. So exactly. So it's it's just that difference between being a consumer or being a producer. And if students can show, if you think about value in a digital Web3 economy, your screens are either sucking your attention for somebody else's profit or you're producing media and posting it for your profit because media is how you generate capital in an economy that's based on human attention, right? Social media produces social capital. We're saying academic media will produce academic capital. And so students can um, show that they are ready for a Web3 world by being producers, that they have the skills as producers to deal with ambiguous, um, complex situation and think critically. Um, whereas the standard transcript or standardized test just shows how well you follow directions and how well you're prepared for the jobs that AI is going to take. So those measures, even if you do well on a standardized test, it's just showing that you're absolutely not ready for the digital economy. Hmm. Interesting. And that's, that's, I guess, what the whole point is to prepare students for what's coming next, which uh, we heard a little bit from Somi. And right. I think it's more to measure which and... students are prepared, right? And mm -hmm. so that we can start mm -hmm. looking and seeing well, where this course. type of learning mm -hmm. is happening and how to incentivize it. Right on. And then, you, and then you mint that experience into an NFT. An experience hopefully they'll never forget and they'll look back at their transcript at each NFT they minted and remember that experience as opposed to now where you forget everything you learn in school. Perfect. Well, I'm wishing you very well on that. I think that engaging the young minds and hearts is always the, a big challenge for the champions. So go for it. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Yes, thank you. I have uh, one comment on that. I was, I was doing a bit of reading about how this is all enabled and I thought it was uh, really interesting how you have uh, NT NFTs, non-transferable NFTs, uh, which makes complete sense in this particular use case. So 
I thought uh, that was an interesting new term that I hadn't heard that I think the the audience may not have heard as well. NT NFTs, so non transferable. Yeah, so non transferable because it's and there it actually didn't start with us. It started with like concert tickets. If you want to prove twenty years from now that you were a certain ball game or a certain concert, you can't transfer it to somebody else so that they can claim that experience. And so there are certain NFTs that are just kind of um, that are non transferable and they have value in um, showing providence rather than in market trades. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm uh, interested to see how people can utilize that similar concept. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, right on. I think there's a lot of opportunity to to explore and investigate when it comes to new models of learning and, like you said, new models of proving uh, the learning. I, I like the idea of academic capital. Good for you, Nadav, and we're all looking forward. Yeah, to the it. the academic testing industry, the high stakes testing, is a 19 billion dollar industry. So um, there's a huge potential ripe for disruption alrighty. and speaking of disruption and all of this technology we needed to get the voice out there and so we also have a, um, some guests on today who are going to talk to us about the the marketing side and, and how to sell and be successful within the nft space so arvin is here from sold out nfts hi arvin hey there So, yeah, you know, I think we're, we're listening to some interesting talk today. And now we want to discuss a bit about marketing and, and selling NFTs and networking, uh, which is a lot of your background is in marketing, isn't it? It is. Yeah, first of all, Nadav, sign me up. Sounds like an amazing project. So cool. Um, and then uh, Somi also, like, uh, it's really cool what you're doing there's like a few projects maybe i could connect you with uh, that they are doing something similar maybe you guys could do collabs some of them already sold out but then do collabs as well uh, but yeah as far as the as far as the marketing side of things so obviously i mean the elephant in the room is that we're experiencing the bear market right now um and i just uh, came back from speaking at tomorrow conference uh there's a bit of the i guess the sentiment of the NFT community is a bit, uh, they're shocked. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of conversations about, you know, cash is king versus like investing for collectors, plus also uh, the founders of the NFTs as well, when they when it comes to spending money on uh, their own collection. Now, there's, uh, there's been an evolution on what has been working for, uh, for NFT marketing. So uh, first of all, for people who, are just new to the Web3. Obviously, Web2 marketing is not something that um, is really working in the Web3. So a lot of people actually attempted, a lot of very famous people actually attempted um, to do Web2 marketing in the Web3, uh, miserably failed, um, and um, not to name much, because I, I actually know some of those projects people, but um, the Web3 has its own components, has its own vibe, has its own way of doing things. So, you know, there's Discord, there's Twitter, um, and it has it has components that has to be there. You can't just um, do it your way. Um, it has to follow that basic structure, the NFT. Um, but then also, yeah. in the I would I want to say let's say last year around somewhere around November December that's where um, the searching queries for NFTs surpassed cryptocurrencies. Um, and there was a huge acquisition um, in the market of just people just coming in, buying NFTs without even doing any research on them. And so the consequence of that for the NFT founders at that point was amazing because they would just sell out left and right. Um, and um, unfortunately, some of them took the easy route of just selling out one project and then starting a new project uh, together instead of just really focusing on delivering on the previous project that's just sold out. So as a consequence of that, um, uh, you know, where, where in the past I would tell people, say, hey, build a huge Discord, maybe three to five times the number of your collection size, and you would be able to sell out. Um, now, the, 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 I guess, current climate of the collector um, market is that they're just uh, afraid of being like, afraid of um, a not so serious that founders coming in with their NFT ideas, but maybe they, they don't know what they're doing, or maybe they know what they're doing, but 
uh, they're not going to still sell out. And that worries them to, to buy NFTs. And so just building a huge Discord is no longer a way to sell out a NFT collection. And even when it came to utilities, I remember one project specifically we sold out in seven minutes last year. And um, well, actually, no, beginning of this year, it was uh, January, beginning of this year. And then um, in, on the roadmap, we had things like literally like phase one metaverse, phase two staking, just one word. Um, and it's, it's hilarious to just think about how we, we would sell out, but just barely even talking about what we're going to do. We would literally tell people, we'd say, hey, like, trust us. Um, here's some art. Here's a cool community. Trust us. We're going to do something good with your investment. Basically, like, that's how it went. Um, now, that has gone to the other side of the spectrum to the point where you could be completely honest with your community and they're just always worried, paranoid, thinking something's wrong. So for that reason, the, the new way of uh, doing things has uh, uh, been far away from just building a community. It's actually a lot more um, sophisticated. So some of the things that I've been telling people in my community to do uh, that's been helping them is uh, for the first drop, uh, for the first uh, phase of their uh, drop, to do a uh, like a reduced size of collection. So let's say, you know, back in the day, maybe 2017, um, CryptoPunks came out with this 10,000 uh, collection size idea. Everyone started following them. And now we're actually questioning that right now, right? So do we need to actually do that first first round? And the answer for a lot of people would be no. And it's better actually to do something a lot smaller, significantly smaller, somewhere around 100 to 300 um, to get a sellout um, and then uh, deliver on some of your promises. And even so, sometimes I tell people, deliver on your promises before even you sell out. So if you have things on your roadmap, start actually going above and beyond delivering um, and show proof that you're not here to just for a you know cash grab type of project because mm-hmm. that's yeah. needed right now um and and then then once you have that under your belt then you can you can earn some trust um and then you can do a larger collection now you don't have to go back into ten thousand right away you can do maybe a few thousand and then go maybe ten thousand if you wanted to whatever like i know like gary v does like twenty thousand and so on and so forth but like you don't it, it really like business models are different and i think one of the reasons a lot of people following each other on those, uh, I guess, uh, the, the, the way they quantify uh, their collection size is that they don't really think about business. And sometimes, most of the times, they're not even business uh, people. So a lot of times, the artists or developers, they come in and they want to do a project. So um, they don't know, like, they don't actually have the experience with business. Um, so just uh, for people who just get a sense of, like, my experience, so I've been in marketing past 10 years, worked with a lot of public companies, um, did their investor relationship marketing, this essentially looks like finding um, short-term and long-term investors online. Um, specifically, my, my focus was um, paid advertising, managing 500K plus um, uh, for these public companies, finding investors, and which very much uh, transferable into the NFT, even like the, the investor deck that we would do uh, for these public companies is essentially a uh, NFT website. You know the team, the um, the uh, the solution, the problem, the you know oh, the uh, roadmap, yeah, all sorts of things. And so, um, so that's. Did you have a question? No, I'm just oh. uh, listening oh, okay, to you cool. go through it. it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So and then, um, so so now it's changed, right? So there's there, there are more pieces into it. Obviously, building the people's trust, and then the second thing is. I'm actually telling people to qualify people further before getting them into their Discord, Twitter. Now, there was, I want to say, beginning of this year, where a bunch of projects started uh, with um, closed Discords. So they would not have um, everyone and anyone be able to join the Discord. And that um, was a new pattern that just came into the market. Now, we're gone way past that. We're at the point where um, like I have uh, one of the projects that just recently um, just uh, finished uh, creating their community. It would have only people um, join, joining their Discord that 
have Twitter, have Discord. They're able to connect their wallet, say they're interested in that project, um, and tweet that they've done all of the events. Um, so only once they've done all of those, then they were able to actually join this community, which is a lot, right? Um, mm, I remember of, one of yeah, yeah, exactly. So now it, it's partly because collect uh, the collectors themselves um, they need to they need they're looking for something different. They're looking for something really rare. Um, so we need we really need to speak to that. Um, and then the but more importantly. For the founders itself, we need some certainty. The, the market is so insane uh, where we just need some certainty from like what's happening. What like out of, let's say, 10,000 people you have in your Discord, how many of them are actually going to mint? So that's a really big question. And you don't want to go through your you know, two days, three days before you're minting and just like wishing and praying that this is going to go well. You want to actually have certainty. Um, and so uh, that for that reason, you know, we keep adding on things like one one project we literally made it made it that on top of everything i said as far as requirements they would have to buy nfts from another collection that they had uh to be part of their whitelist now um today today i had a and people would do it by the way people would buy it and it was awesome because instead of like themselves mm -hmm. uh, sweeping the floor for the previous collection the community would do it plus they would do a marketing and the community would pay for the marketing it was awesome um but the the idea that like whitelist is also that term and the concept behind whitelist, that's also maybe becoming overrated too. So people in my, um, so I have a program where like it's a more of a mastermind NFT collectors come together. I teach them things, but they teach each other a lot of things as well. And um, they were talking about today, they're like, you know, maybe the whitelist concept is just going to go away. Now I've heard, there's a, actually a platform that's going to start selling. So it's going to be a marketplace for, for whitelist. But um, it's possible. It's possible whitelist concept will go away. So um, point is, there's, uh, there's a need for qualification um, and then reduce collection size. Um, and then lastly, the, who you're targeting. The, the targeting is, is, is maybe is something new. So maybe in the past, we were really focused on NFT uh, type of people. Uh, versus now, um, we may be focusing on newbies because those NFT type of people, they're just so, uh, I mean, so jaded. Um, and they, I mean, you just, just if you, if you want to get a real sense of what, what the community is like right now, just open your Twitter, scroll down in your newsfeed and just see out of every 10 comments, how many of them people talking positively about themselves or their, the rest of the community. Um, and so, so that's, that's what we're dealing with. And so for that reason, those are the three things that I'm telling people to do at this point. Um, and obviously, you know, I just came, like I said, I was just speaking at tomorrow conference. Um, I was actually listening to people. So there's also a conversation about All right, if he's going to go away or crypto is going to go away. Um, you know, there's obviously a war going on. There's two new countries uh, just submitted their um, application to NATO. Mm -hmm. Um, not going to say based on what source, but I've heard some, um, I guess, some info on about mid-June to end of the June, there's going to be a huge transition in the, how the financial system works. Uh, so there's going to be things happening, right, as it's already happening. Um, and so the I'm actually very interested to see uh, what other people are also thinking, you know, in this mm -hmm. in this arena. Um, what's uh, what's working for them? Because uh, it's a it's definitely something um, that is yeah. uh, maybe tough for everyone to navigate. But but also, I like to tell people always that you know, just having seen so many of these things in in the with the with the public company stock market, there's always just ups and downs. So this is just one of those. Um, it will right. it will resolve itself. We're gonna be okay. Uh, uh -huh. But it's good to it's good to just be able to navigate it. Crypto has done okay. this before in general, so it's not uh, it's not a new concept, and I guess it's new for some of the NFT space. But uh, not really new, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Uh, this too yeah. shall pass, they say. I do exactly. have a question. Uh, we kind of spoke about it a lot there, so I'm still trying to process some of that. But mm. uh, and you gave a couple of suggestions on what uh, you suggest to NFT projects. 
mm -hmm. uh, when they're going through that like minting phase or at least marketing phase there. What are some of the reasons that it, you see collections fail or, you know, fail to sell out? Um, Honestly, there's, stuff? yeah, so there's, there's been two projects recently um, out of my Discord that they didn't sell out lately. Both of them was very shocking to see that they didn't sell out. Um, both of them also, they, they had their mint date just very recently, so during this bear market. Um, so I'm going to, without naming them, I'm going to tell you guys what um, we experienced. So the first one um, got hacked um, and they, within the first few hours, they lost about 600K. Um, so it was 600K came to their wallet and then went straight to some developer's wallet and then went straight to some other person's wallet that had 2 billion in it. Um, and so that, um, I believe, made a lot of, and, and so the target market is actually newbies in the, so essentially all the paper hands, that's what they're targeting. And so I believe what happened, um, these guys just got really like, essentially just cold feet, right? So like they, they got really afraid. Um, they were terrified of um, minting because they were saying, they were thinking, well, this project, obviously all the money is just going to go to waste. Right, so this hacker is gonna get it. So I think that that really impacted the the project, which is which is actually important. It's not an anomaly. Like if you guys, for those of you who are thinking, oh, so it's not like everyone's getting hacked. Almost everyone is getting hacked, um, and so that's something really important to to obviously pay attention to. And not not just because you don't want to get hacked and lose money, but also just what that does to um, newbies. Um, they they don't necessarily yeah, yeah, they don't necessarily thinking, oh, we've seen this before, or just any rationaliz rationalization around it. This it's more like, oh, like this is not a good place to be. Like I need to go. <laughs> like that's that's how they they react to it. Um, yeah, of course. And they never come back to say like, oh, okay, we fixed the issues. We've we brought teams to um, analyze everything. Um, we know, like we tested things again. We know this. We're not going to get hacked because of like all these companies we hired and paid like thousands of thousands of dollars to. We we know we're confident, blah blah blah. But no, like that that's gone for them. They're already out. So um, that's that was one reason. And see, yeah. So that's so the, for the first one. Um, I, I believe it was twofold. One was the hacking thing, and then the second thing was their art is amazing. So much so that the community was saying like it's actually worth like three E's, right? Just, just the art itself, themselves saying it. Um, and so the art is amazing. The community is amazing. Like people is literally, they come on these spaces, they spend hours and hours talking with each other, like cry, just so emo emotional for like each other, um, how, lo how much they love each other, so on and so forth. So that's really cool. But the utility, even though it's coming from a very, uh, really, really cool team with like a huge track record of success in, um, in business, they um and it's also like my mistake of just overseeing this but um they didn't really um communicate their utility well and we just thought we don't like it almost like sometimes you just think you're too good with your community and everything that's happening okay. you forget all the like little pieces right so like the right. the utility wasn't communicated really well and if, if when we look back at it we're like yeah definitely the second project um the utility was great. The art was great. There was no hacking. But then um, the, the community was huge. There was a lot of hype around it, like real hype, like meaning more demand than there is supply. But then over the, like, I want to say the past six or seven days before they go into uh, their mint day. Now, I wasn't there to, to help them with this, but um, what they did, um, with as, uh, as far as like in reaction to like people kind of just, um, you know, talking negatively about the project wasn't a good reaction to, to the community and like how they just didn't handle um, what the community was saying like a few days before. And that, that's the o literally the only thing. So like having uh, really good communication skills to your community. To yeah, and just transparency to a level that like, because it's like, it's hard. It's really hard when you like, there's sometimes like you, you make a mistake and it's just like to a large community that you build and um, you don't know what to do, right? There's no model, you know, there's, you've okay. never done these things before as a founder. 
So it's like, it's so hard. It's so hard. Um, I guess that's why it helps to have people like you around that can help with, with those scenarios. 100%. Because there's certain things I've seen it before, right? So like, uh, for example, like people would sometimes get afraid around changing their mint date. But I've, I've seen that so many times where like I know exactly how to do it so then it goes well. Um, and so that's, yeah. those are, yeah, there's certain things like if you've just been around and seen enough projects, you can, you can help out. But yeah, those are, those are the two projects that, um, now for the second project, I think the bear market obviously uh, was also yeah. an issue, so, but, um, yeah. But yeah, sure. we're going to, well, I, I'm sorry to jump in there. We're, we're going to have to also move over to Tim, uh, awesome. but I mean, you're giving us like a lot of great. Yeah, insights and ideas here, and we're we're gonna keep ch chatting more about this. Uh, but I do want to hear also from Tim around this subject here. Uh, Lunar Strategy is also involved with uh, it's a crypto and NFT growth agency. So, Tim, can you talk about the significant shift away from the traditional marketing strategies uh, that these Web three projects require? Yeah, absolutely. So. I've also been in, in marketing for the last six, seven years and in the crypto for quite a few years, seeing initially the ICOs happening in 2017, 2018. And what you see right now in the NFT world is that it's kind of building up a few different types of NFTs. Uh, some of them are the utility NFTs. Uh, with art to it as well. But another category is the um, just art NFTs. And the just art NFTs here, uh, kind of the slogan has been, don't ask artists for utility because the utility is the art itself. And then on the other side, it's kind of where the NFTs are kind of used like as shares in a project. So by owning the NFT, you become some sort of a stakeholder to the project. And then there's the gap in the middle. What we can see is that there's a lot of similarities between how a project is built up. Uh, but on some core level, the storytelling is always uh, one of the key pillars and being able to communicate in a clear way. And this is also what uh, Growfax was talking about here before. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely see a trend uh, that is going away from the more traditional approach to marketing. And the more traditional approach to marketing was it like the more traditional approach can definitely work to sell out a collection, but the traditional marketing stops at the collection being sold out. Then afterwards, what will you do afterwards? This is kind of like the approach where if you treat the NFT holders as your customers, as soon as the NFT project is sold out, then the project will go down. You will slowly see the, uh, the prices of the NFT and the community go down as well, because Kind of like, yeah, yeah, like we heard here before, like the founders move on to the next project without seeing each project as something that needs to be grown in the, like the, in the long term mm, kept and alive. yeah, kept alive and, and the marketing, like when it comes to web three marketing after the sellout or when you have sold out a project it can be an NFT or a crypto. Uh, an ICO or IDO, that's kind of where you see the Web3 crypto marketing. That's when it's the most important to keep the project alive and have a long-term strategy. And to be able to early on in the project communicate that. Another thing that you can also see is quite a few projects going under in the, in the uh, slower market that we see right now because they used their whole marketing budget for the mint and then they kept everything in like ethereum or uh or ethereum or something like that as as well as spending all of the budget to for the launch without having the long-term vision in mind 
So then basically they don't have any uh, yeah, investment to make in the, in the long-term marketing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different angles to it. And I think that traditional marketeers and people that understand marketing from a traditional perspective will definitely struggle going into the, to the new way of marketing. And that's also why, of course, like myself and my team work on going over on podcasts and talking about marketing. Uh, we're also launching a crypto marketing course um, that will come out in, the, in a month or two uh, that basically will be around uh, educating traditional marketeers on how to, how to grow and how to nice. become, understand the you, you know, you refer to an approach that focuses on what uh, what matters most, which includes genuine community growth, as well as building long term engagement, as well as establishing authority. So, if if there's anything about those that you would like to talk about further, we'd love to hear a bit. Yeah, I've, as as a, as a, as a business, uh, you're always responsible for the projects that you work with. So I think one of the key things that uh, I will say is that it's important to work with a project that has a genuine leadership team in the project. And that's definitely something that you can see in the, in the best communities where the founders are very active and the founders are like chatting in the community. The founders are making announcements and they are very passionate about what they are doing. And they have like a, a mission that they believe in. Um, and then on, uh, then They're I think able to show themselves as authorities. Like, do you, do you, do you encourage this out of the communities that you, that you um, interact with? you get them to be more involved and, and, and grow their community for a long-term engagement and to establish themselves as authorities? That's, also, that's definitely one part of the, the key to establish uh, one or two of the leaders in the community as thought leaders within their industry. So, for example, we are working with some traditional finance companies that are going into the crypto um, they, they are kind of using NFTs as well as tokens in order to change some traditional finance. And in order to get uh, companies and individuals to trust the project, basically one of the core things that we're doing is doing C like CEO interviews and uh, leadership articles and different ways of building up the founders of the project because you can definitely see that out there there has been some trust issues with some founders founders and you can definitely see what happened with uh, quite recent projects like azuki when you saw that some of their founders were a little bit sketchy maybe we can call it and how the the whole project's floor price like halved within matter of uh, days so definitely it's key that and uh, the founders in the project has authority in their niche yeah so you think that that something like that could have been avoided uh, in, through a different circumstance or do you think it was inevitable that it was going to happen that way i think there will always be uh, different i think it depends very much on what kind of project that we are talking about because if it's an nft collection where there's some utility around finance which is a very of course sensitive uh, sensitive topic because there's so much security that goes into it i think in those types of projects it's more important to have authoritative leaders um, but when it comes to more art projects where the art is the main utility, then there's another type of authority that is needed. So I think it depends a little bit on project to project. 
I have a, uh, I have a question. It might be a, a tough one and something that you might get a lot is how do you grow an NFT collection or how do you market in an NFT collection with a, uh, a small or no budget or at least, you know, what would be your tips and tricks or must do's for people in that position? Yeah. So if, if a project has a budget of less than 10,000 uh, euros, dollars uh, for at least three months, I usually recommend to not hire an agency and do it in-house, maybe take on one kind of all around marketer that has some experience in PR as well as some experience in community growth and potentially some paid advertising experience. And then I would recommend uh, to, uh, to probably, uh, uh, I wrote a book quite recently that is called uh, the only guide you need for crypto and team marketing. You can find it on Amazon for $9. So maybe read a book or two and try to do it yourself. There's a lot of really good guides out there. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say that a PR and publishing guest posts will be one of the core, uh, core things I see projects with little or limited budget doing uh, and establishing taught leadership for your project using yeah guest post or uh, press releases to to build up the initial authority and maybe that way get some initial investors quick question for you um tim is uh your background is in pr um so my background is in paid advertising Oh, okay, cool. As well, that, that's the core. But PR is kind of like something that any marketer needs to understand because it's kind of one of the pillars to any any successful strategy because it's a, a very efficient way of communicating the core storytelling. So I definitely think that because you don't need a lot to publish an article for a hundred euros, you can publish on market watch and some of the other kind right. of leading uh, press releases and guest posts if you have a good story that is not too promotional because that's also one thing like i would recommend never in an article use words like revolutionary uh, like like when when you hype up a product too much because people don't believe in it and it, it kind of the product loses credibility if you use like groundbreaking tremendous and these types of words so probably tone it down and find some guest posts or press releases to start with is what i would yeah say. but like i guess what i'm what i'm getting is like um do you find is there one part of the marketing that you found works best like between paid ads pr say seo let's say and all sorts of like methodologies. Is there one that you found like that's that you like without that projects will fail or with it projects will flourish? Um, on, on the strategy to use, like all of these are different vehicles of getting and grabbing attention. Hmm. So it the, the core thing here is like what timeline are you after? So for example, on, on my own website, I have worked with writing blog articles for the last two and a half, three years. And that means that over the last year, uh, on just on, on my website, I get around 20 to 25 people every day that contacts me needing help with marketing. So SEO is still as relevant as ever before, but it takes time. So SEO is basically SEO and content marketing is definitely two of the core things that I see work, but then you need to have at least six months approach with and invest in creating great content. On the short term basis, paid ads can work as a, like a mid funnel uh, activity where it's helping both with building up the brand as well as driving some initial traffic. But usually the traffic that is coming from paid advertising is not so engaged and not so engaged and not so 
um, valuable. And then comes like in the more short term, uh, sponsored articles and influencers is still a key thing that can work if you do it correctly. But of course, there's a lot of unserious influencers that have already kind of burnt all the bridges with their own communities and their followers and so on that doesn't trust them which is what makes it very hard for them to talk about different projects um but then also like an approach where you um yeah go on podcasts go on um go on podcasts go on twitter spaces engage with the community um is also another thing that can work if you do it correctly with the right strategies behind yeah it makes sense Awesome. I appreciate the answer. Yeah, good question. Uh, to my original question, I like the uh, the reader book. That's a, that's a good one. I'm always a big fan of self-education and investing in education because uh, the, the investment is definitely worthwhile. Right on. I think we've gotten a lot of, of good um, ideas out of the discussion today, uh, especially here with the, the marketing from Arvin and, and from Tim, I've found that to be quite interesting and, and, and educational for all of us, informative. I hope that everyone else has found that to be the case as well. As well from Nadav and, and Somi, we've had some looks into the future. And Nadav, I'm very excited about what you're doing because not a lot of people are involved in that in that space, uh, do you think you're the only one right now, or, or have you been meeting other people who are involved in this as well? Uh, not specifically in what we're doing in high school. There are some people that are doing similar things in micro credentialing at the university level or at the professional level, but in the high school, especially public high schools where I serve, um, I don't know of any other projects. Very interesting. And that's in New York, by the way. Yeah, I I just. Uh, Retired from uh, twenty years of work in New York City. That's right. That's cool. That's cool. I uh, I used to. I went to Stony Brook. Oh wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know people there. Yeah. Nice. So very good. Yeah, so, and yeah. go ahead, Arvin. Oh no, I've just gotta say, like, it just brings back memories. It's so cool. Like you, you're doing that. Like that's awesome. Um, so great. Great for you doing this. Thank nice. You. And Nadav, hopefully you've gotten something out of the discussion with uh, with Tim and with Arvin. Um, Absolutely, we are... yeah. We're, my team is looking at how, um, you know, although we're an NFT platform for high school students, we're looking to see how we could might use NFTs uh, ourselves. And so um, I'm definitely listening with wide open ears to the discussion. Perfect. Well, it is going to be time to round out our talk for today. Once again, we've had incredible guests. Somi Arian, you can find more about her at fem, fempeak.ai slash NFT. And we've also got Nadav here. Nadav, how can we find out more about you? hs.credit. The site that's there is very wordy. There's a new video-driven site coming very soon. So pardon our appearances right now, but hs.credit, like highschool.credit. Thank you very much. And Arvin, how about yourself? How can we find out more about you and what you're working on? Yes, yeah, so Arvin K N F D on all socials. I'm most responsive on Twitter. So slide in the TM if you want. Um, and then um, I also publish a lot of case studies on um, soldoutnfts.io. So that's S O L D N F T S dot I O. Uh, essentially just um, Projects that sell out, just write out what they've done, what worked, what didn't work, how they've done it, um, and what results they've gotten. Uh, so you guys can, you know, there was a talk about self-studying. If you want to do things yourself, you can just read those, uh, experiment, see if you can do it yourself as well. Nice. Thank you. And Tim from Lunar Strategy, where can we find out more about you? Um, same. Twi Twitter is the best way uh, where I'm most active, publishing articles with uh, guides and tips and a little bit a every day to day what, what's going on. Uh, so Twitter at Tim Haldorson. 
Perfect. Thank you very much. And I think I do actually have one more question just for as like a public service. How can we avoid scams? They're everywhere. You mentioned about hacks, but how can we as users um, just avoid falling into the wrong NFT projects? Uh, do you have any insights for us there, Arvin and, and Tim? And of course, Nadav, if you have any insights as well, we'd love to hear. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, instead of buying and then doing a research, obviously do your research and then buy, obviously. But um, I found that, um, you know, looking at track records of people, it should be a good indication of, you know, if they can pull um, a good uh, size project or not. Looking at how many whitelisters they have. Um, looking at, um, like, you know, every time they advertise things. I honestly, like, so I actually have to deal with projects myself where, like, I don't want to, like, deal with projects that are going to be rock pulled myself. So I look at small things, you know, how they talk. Like, so say, like, in their communications, right? So whether it be Discord, Twitter, whatever they are. But, like, how they communicate to you if you're reaching out to them or if you see their announcements. Do they, do they take shortcuts? in what they do, like how they do things. Cause like, I believe like, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Um, you can really tell uh, a lot about like what people are like. Um, so that's been my way of doing things, but there, there are also like a lot of alpha groups out there. Um, you can join their discords and just understand. So those are some of the things you can do. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Get close. And if you can yeah. communicate with the, the leaders, do that. And Tim. I definitely agree that the track record is a key pillar uh, of the founding team, and I think that NFTs without the without the without the founders having a track record uh, should be traded at a discount. So they should always be trading at a discount, and only NFTs where there's a clear track record or followers or like credibility behind the product, those are the only product that should be traded at the premium market cap. Hmm, interesting. Good thoughts. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, this brings us towards the end of our Tokal talk. Once again, thank you, Nadav, um, and thank you to Arvin, and thank you to Tim. Of course, thanks to Nutella for joining us as well today. Yeah, no worries. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody, for sharing your insights. Appreciate it. Right on. And of course, thanks again to Kelsey for joining us and especially for that new segment and the stats segment. Thank you very much for that. Of course. And, and thank you for hosting as usual. Right on. We look forward to the next one. We Absolutely. wonder what kind of news you're going to be coming with next time. Yep. There's always right, something everyone. happening. Indeed. Excellent. Well, that's going to be it for us for today. All right. Thanks again to the guests. And we are asking you all to tune in for our next Topol Talk. Okay, our guests are going to include gaming NFTs Avagachi. Plus, we'll have Justin Hartsman, CEO of CoinSmart, a crypto exchange. So that's on the 31st of May. All right, keep your eye out for the announcements and further details. And to stay up to date with the latest, follow us on Twitter at Topol Platform and join our community in the Topol Discord. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye. Everyone. <laughs>